Greetings everyone! It's time for another Amplifier on the Analyzer video. And you clever ones who read the title know what it's all about. The TPA 1517. It's uh, another one of my favorite chip amps because easy to use, not a lot of external parts required in a stereo amplifier. Now a lower power version, which is my favorite, is the TP or the TDA 7268, which is really just two 7267 chips in one package. And I already did the uh, 67 on the analyzer, so you can see how that performs. Well, this chip is a little bit of a step up in power. You know that other chip was one or two watts, and this we should get a little bit more. And uh, later on, we'll do the 7264, which is, I think it's marketed as 20 watts per channel. We'll look at that in an upcoming video. And, of course, we'll move on from there to even higher power chips like the LM3886. But for now, we're going to do this chip. And you know what? It's still available. As, a, as the time I shoot this video, early 2025, it's actually still in production. It comes in three different package types. You get the uh, dual inline pin here, or the single inline pin. They even make a surface mount version of this chip. Someone was asking about my test setup, and I know I don't show it in all the videos, but I'll do a quick run through here. Most audio amplifiers don't require regulated supply, but since I'm demonstrating the output power at a given supply voltage, in that case, I'd say it's pretty important to use a regulated supply. And with this amplifier, I'll test at 12 and 15 volts. Now, I use my own DIY cables because I can keep them only as long as I need them to be and use heavier gauge wire to reduce losses. And I... Uh, run into this large value capacitor supplying the device under test. This being a stereo amplifier I run both channels into my non-inductive load resistors switchable between 4 and 8 ohm settings and uh, of course the Quant Asylum. This is really two devices in one. It provides the low distortion output signal which you feed into the amplifier and you take some of that signal from the load here into its input where it measures it with a low distortion A to D converter and provides that information in its application. So yeah that's a very quick run through of my test setup. So how many of you keen-eyed viewers notice I had the output and inputs reversed on that. But anyhow, everything's squared away now and I'm doing the kickoff test. Just a one kilohertz test at one watts with an eight ohm load. And um, you can see distortion is around 0.1%, about what I would expect for a chip like this. And um, gain is only 19.35 the uh, data sheet says 20 so it's pretty close and that's one issue with this chip it doesn't have a lot of gain they set the gain to be very low it's internally set so you can't adjust it so you can see to get one watt of output into 8 ohms I have to put you know 316 millivolts into the thing frequency response well, looking at the low end of the audio spectrum here, you can see we're 3 dB down at 25 hertz. And uh, this is logarithmic, so 5 is not going to be directly between those two lines. It's a bit shifted right. So yeah, about 25 hertz. Now this is a capacitively coupled output. I'm using 1000 microfarad coupling caps, so that's why you see that roll off like that. But, you know, that's perfectly normal and expected. On the high end of the spectrum, 
at 20 kilohertz or about a tenth of a dB down. I have low pass filters installed here to block RF out of the amplifier and that's the reason for that. Now with a 4 ohm load you can see our roll off frequency is higher at 45 because again the uh, lower impedance with that capacitively coupled output will cause that and it's not really going to affect the high end at all. Power versus distortion at 12 volt supply. So we start out pretty low with the 8 ohm line here around 0.04 percent and 0.08 at 4 ohm and this is why my distortion was a little higher when I did the introductory measurement because I was measuring pretty close to clipping. I should have measured it back around half a watt or so. And you can notice how the 4 ohm is lower here because there's a little more headroom before we get into distortion. We cross the 1% line around 1.5 or 1.6. And again, this is uh, logarithmic, so 5 is not going to be in the middle. It's going to be over here. And with 4 ohms, we're 2. Point, about 2.7, I would say. So uh, pretty good output power with the chip. Okay, now we're at 15 volts, power versus distortion. You can see uh, it's really about the same down in this area. But now we're hitting the 1% line at about 2.5 watts and probably like 4.3 watts at 4 ohms so picking up quite a bit of power running the chip at 15 volts frequency versus distortion 4 and 8 ohms again I measured at 1 watt so that's why when I mentioned that before that's why the 4 ohms was showing lower because they kinda invert around 1 watt but at lower frequencies, you can see we're approaching about 0.3%, and it drops to this low level around the 0.1 line, and then it increases at 20 kilohertz to 0.3 again. So actually, that's that's not bad at all, really. Now, some of the chips I saw at higher frequencies, it would approach the 1%, but this is keeping it pretty low across the frequency band. And by the way, the problem with the THD not lining up in the last video turned out to be an actual bug in the software. I contacted him and uh, told him about it, and he had me do a few things. And he said, yep, it's a bug. We'll fix it in the next software release. But a workaround was to type some numbers in the Y1 Max box until this repainted itself and it now puts the numbers in the corresponding position of the decibels so just a temporary workaround so there you go the TDA 1517 stereo amplifier chip so nice little option if you want a little bit more power and still be conservative on the batteries because when you get into those bridged amplifier chips or even class D which are usually bridged, they tend to draw quite a bit on the batteries. And uh, yeah, you can get three or four decent watts if you run it at 15 volts. Pretty low gain amplifier. It should be very good with noise. And it should work with line level signals, but headphone type output, if you connect it to this, if it doesn't get loud enough, or I should say um, high enough signal for this, you may not be able to push the amp to its limits. So just be aware of that. With that, we'll wrap it up here, and thank you for watching.